The government may be unable to service its current and future debts. Zambia at the moment owes $11 billion in external debt, a large chunk of it to China. So could the sacking of Dennis Kalialia have anything to do with this? Trevor uh, Simumba is an economics analyst in Lusaka. The president has given no reason. So whatever we say is purely speculation uh, based on what inside sources are saying. Basically, from senior sources within the government, the decision to fire Denny Kalalia has actually been made because um, Denny Kalalia was not amenable to printing more money. Uh, basically, the Bank of Zambia, since this COVID crisis, has been uh, printing money using uh, basically quantitative easing. The Bank of Zambia recently issued a bond for $8 billion, but they only managed to raise uh, $6.8 billion. And out of that $6.8 billion, uh, $3.1 billion was allocated to a so-called presidential empowerment fund, which absolutely makes no sense because we do not understand exactly what that presidential empowerment fund will do, what criteria will be used to decide how that money is spent. So the governor spoke very candidly a few days ago about the economic situation and he did say that, look, even before COVID, Zambia's economy was in the doldrum. That's a fact. Many credible economists have made the same view, including myself. So I think Denny Kalaya has um, bitten the bullet mainly because of political economic issues rather than uh, an issue of competence or that he may have done something that was absolutely wrong. I do not think that. Trevor, explain to us then, put your economics hat on, and tell us why a country like Zambia, with a debt of over 11 billion US dollars, would want to print more money. That seems to be a recipe for disaster. For disaster. You would ask the same question, why did Zimbabwe go the way it went? Unfortunately, right now in Zambia, political survival is the name of the game. The president wants to ensure that in 2021, he wins the election. And he will do whatever it takes to win that election, right. even if it means tanking the economy. We are really in a very difficult situation. But the president and his clique of people around him, his, what would call his cartel, are not willing to take the necessary measures in order to stabilize the economy. Because taking those measures will mean that they will not have access to the largest of the public purse, which so, they want to use to buy their way back into office. With the departure of Denny Kalialia, who's going to replace? Him. The president has appointed a gentleman uh, who was deputy secretary to the cabinet, Mr. Christopher Vunga. He has now been appointed as governor subject to ratification. Many of us are very shocked by this move because there is a current serving deputy governor, Dr. Francis Chipimo, who is more than qualified to be governor. But instead, the president has gone to pick an outsider, a political appointment. Mr. Bunga is an accountant. He's a qualified accountant. He has worked in uh, commercial banking, but he has not worked at the highest level. He has no real economic experience at all. And quite frankly, he does not have the gravitas nor the competence to be governor of the central bank in Zambia right now. Remind us, what has that $11 billion that has been racked up in debt been spent on in Zambia? The bulk of that money has gone into road projects and uh, also projects linked to the security sector, to the police, to the army, to the air force. They've built houses for the security officers, which is good. But remember, these are social. this is social spending. They don't have a return on investment. The only big money that has gone into what would call economic infrastructure has been the money, the $2 billion that has gone into power, into the power sector. But the rest of the money has gone into roads. Roads that have not been done to the standard that is required. There are a lot of scandalous projects that the government has initiated, highly inflated. The average cost of building a road in Zambia is close to $2 million per kilometer. It is the highest in the region. But also the government has brought in advisors to help it manage its borrowing and level of debt. Is that not a positive thing? The appointment of Lazard is a positive thing. However, it's already looking uh, like uh, a venture that will not work because, firstly, uh, the group of creditors, they formed a group together the, who hold about 70% of Zambia's eurobonds. They've come together as a creditor group. And they told the government and told Lazard that, yes, we are willing to renegotiate the debt with Zambia. However, this can only be done on two major factors. Number one, China must be brought to the table because China is holding 30% of Zambia's debt. So we need to see what kind of deal the Zambian government will have with China. 
Secondly, the IMF must be involved by backing or endorsing the recovery plan. There will be no debt forgiveness like it was in 2005. So we are talking about debt reprofiling, debt restructuring, extending the repayment term, maybe reducing the interest rate. So that is what we're talking about. About Trevor Simumba there, the economist.